where they can ensure that nobody infringes those unjustly. Mm -hmm. uh, SNP spokesperson Hannah Bardell. Thank you very much, Madam Deputy Speaker, and it is a real honour and privilege to speak as the SNP's lead uh, for our delegation to the Council of Europe. Um, and I want to first put on record my thanks to the Honourable Member for Henley and for his great work that he does for leading us, but also to Nick Wright and the staff in the Council of Europe office, who are always there and on hand for us whenever we need help or support. And actually, I'm sure have like myself when I joined in 2018, had a lot to learn about the Council of Europe. But I think this is truly one of those unique debates where there will be much more agreement than disagreement. And I have to say that the contributions, particularly from my uh, friends in the delegation across the chamber and the Conservative Party, genuinely gives me a sense of hope and a sense of uh, faith in, in our democracy that I think perhaps the Council of Europe is keeping them on the right track and keeping them honest in some respects. <laughs> and I mean that in the kindest possible way, because it is clear to me that all of those members who are on the delegation, who are here speaking today, particularly from the Conservatives, are absolutely committed eh, to the principles of human rights and democracy that the Council of Europe holds so dear and champions in everything that, it's, that it does. Um, and for my own you know, personal part, I have to say, you know, not just getting elected uh, as a, a Member of Parliament uh, for my hometown of Livingston is such a huge privilege, but I can't imagine as a wee queer lassie from a working class single parent family growing up in Livingston, I could never in my wildest dreams have imagined that the institution that I studied at both, in both modern studies and then in my politics degree would I walk through the doors of the Council of Europe in Strasbourg as a fully-fledged member. And I have to say that it is something of some significant pride uh, and honour to, to take up that role. And I hope I've made and played my part and contribution uh, since 2018 as a member of various committees, but particularly the Human Rights uh, and Legal Affairs Committee. Uh, I've been a rapporteur on a report on human rights and public health approach to drugs policy. That was done largely uh, under the auspices of COVID, so it was more challenging when we were doing things online. But I want to put on record my huge thanks to the staff that supported me in that, particularly Kelly, who did so much work and research. I had the privilege during that period of uh, when we were allowed uh, out and about, I got to visit um, a drugs consumption room in Strasbourg, and that is an experience that I will never, ever forget. You know, as the debate and the discussion on drugs policy rages across the UK and the UK media and beyond, seeing the progress and the work that France had made and the other countries had made in bringing forward uh, a drugs consumption room and, and those kinds of facilities was truly incredible. And it, as other members have said, you know, the opportunity to be in the Council of Europe and to work with and see an eye into uh, the, the workings of our European friends and neighbours really does open our eyes and open our horizons. Um, I've also, I'm also now the rapporteur on a, a report into uh, the state of human rights, human rights defenders and journalists in Azerbaijan, and that is something that I am relishing. But I want to draw particularly uh, attention to the, the comments made by the Honourable Member for Henley about the um, perceptions that there are in society, and perhaps even in this place about the Council of Europe and its work. People may not know this, but the, the, the EU actually uh, nicked the flag from uh, <laughs> the Council of Europe, and uh, I think it also adopted many other principles from it. Um, he spoke passionately about the importance of the Reykjavik summit, uh, summit and I would share you know, his uh, gratitude and, and delight that the, the UK Prime Minister attended, uh, the work that it has done and, and what it set out in terms of particularly tackling uh, the war in Ukraine and the sanctions imposed on Russia are incredibly important. I would say that we on these benches in the SNP don't feel that the UK Government is doing enough and significantly more needs to be done. Um, you know, I have sat myself on legislation, the sanctions uh, bill, which did not go nearly as far enough. But we, we want to ensure that there are concrete steps put in place so that, that frozen Kremlin-linked assets can be seized and invested into the proposed Marshall Plan, which I know uh, the, the Dutch government has taken up. And that is something that I think and I hope uh, that will be considered. Um, other members made really fantastic contributions. The Honourable Member for Islington North took a moment to reflect on his 40 years being elected 
Uh, he's been elected as long as I've been alive. I turned 40 last week, so I don't mean to make him feel old in any way. Um, but I know he has worked hard for his constituents, and I congratulate him on 40 years in this place. And he spoke um, about uh, the European Court's ruling on the Rwanda case, and there's been much talk about immigration and uh, you know, the honourable member for, for Pinner spoke passionately, actually, about about the the Council of Europe and its work, and I was really genuinely delighted to hear that. I hope those on his front bench and in government will be reflecting on that ruling, uh, on the work of the Council of Europe, and and also just the very principle that others have have highlighted of us continuing to be members uh, of the Council of Europe because it would be heartbreaking and unthinkable that the UK would turn its back on the Council of Europe uh, and walk away from that because I certainly have reflected as a member who was there during the dying days of the, the Brexit process of really the outrage and horror of our European colleagues and, and the pain that they felt um, at that vote and, and the decision that the UK had taken. Equally, a desire to work with us uh, and to move forward. And I hope for my own part and for my own party's part that when we are an independent nation, we will, I have no doubt, be a proud member of the Council of Europe and I hope the European Union. And the Honourable Lady for Staffer spoke about how she had been embraced as a new mum to the Council of Europe and, and uh, that was wonderful to, to hear and I hope gives hope to other members who will have children and, and will be able to balance those um, responsibilities, uh, because I know for many it's a it's a, a, a daunting task. So I congratulate her on on doing that. And she spoke about the um, the history of the Council of Europe and its origins, that it was born out of the tragedy and war of World War Two. And and I think there was unanimity across the House about the expulsion of Russia, um, and there will continue to be. And and never has it been more obvious of the importance of us working together uh, as European nations against uh, the war in Russia. Um, and uh, The Honourable Member for the Gower spoke passionately about her work at the Council of Europe on abuse in sport, and I know that that's something that she continues to champion and, and will champion there. Um, the Honourable Lady for the Cities of London and Westminster talked about the debate she took part in on gender-based violence, and that's important. And, and the Istanbul Convention has been something that we have been, I think, a little slower than we would like to ratify in the UK. And it was, of course, my uh, honourable friend, uh, former member for Bamford and Buck and Ailey Whiteford, who brought the bill to this place um, off the back of the great work of the Council of Europe. Uh, it took a few years to get it ratified. I hope in future we will be a little speedier yes, uh, to, to, to get that legis those important pieces of legislation ratified. But I look forward to working with her on, on those important issues. And the Honourable Gentleman for North Norfolk talked about um, the work that he has done on track and trace applications. That must have been a very interesting piece of work to do at that particular time. But also the beauty of the broadening of horizons of the Council of Europe. And I think that that is absolutely uh, something that we... Uh, we must all embrace, and I'm very conscious of time, Madam Deputy Speaker, that I probably, or, um, Mr. Deputy Speaker, that I have gone over time. But I do want to just once again put on record uh, my thanks to the honourable member uh, for Henley for all that he does as, as the head of our delegation. There will be many things on which we disagree, but I think as a UK delegation, we do work well together.